Andy Haverlaw with the Texas Consumer Association, which I know keeps a close eye on the power grid and prices. Sandy, thanks for joining us this morning. I suspect morning. that El Paso customers are paying less for or more for energy for the luxury of being on the western grid. Is that not the trade off? You get on that national grid, you pay more and we in Texas pay less. Is that right? Well, maybe on kilowatt hours here and there, but generally um, for uh, across the board, when you take the total bill, Texans aren't paying lower uh, on a total bill, maybe per kilowatt hour, just because the pr gas prices right now are a little bit low. As you are well aware, and I've seen on your shows already, our price in Texas is, is really dependent upon the gas price because we are so heavily dependent on gas. But luckily for consumers in Texas, we have a lot of solar right now. It's another bright sunny day in Texas, and so we are going to see uh, solar outperform uh, what it has done in the past and probably have another record day. And solar... Yeah, and Consumers and wind too, <laughs> Sandy. And wind. wind has been, and, and, yeah. Yes, yes. And so, wind too. So and should, wind's been great. should consumers be pleased with the grid's performance this summer, and and can uh, it improve? I think uh, consumers should be satisfied with it. I'm not sure they should be pleased with it. A lot of the issues with the grid uh, had to do with winterization and taking care of problems that were winter problems. During the summer, our issue tends to be generation and do we have enough generation for the demand? Clearly right now, everybody has their air conditioner on and everybody is uh, is running it at peak performance. So uh, there are differences between the two uh, seasons, summer and winter, but consumers should be glad that they are not subject to uh, rolling blackouts right now. Well, yes, uh, I think we're all very thankful of that. And it looks like, and everybody says we're going to survive this summer, that there is enough supply to meet demand. But how concerned are you that uh, we may have an issue if we see another massive Arctic blast like we saw two winters ago? Tell me. I think the concern is that gas performs during that time period. You know, does, does is gas able to show up and and provide the generation necessary. Uh, that's where the problem was during winter storm Mary. We never really expect wind and solar to be the power producers during the winter time. And um, when the gas well heads froze and when gas didn't perform, that's where our, our major problems were created during winter storm Mary. That being said, um, I think some of the issues will be taken care of, not probably not every single one of them by this next winter, but most of the uh, legislation addressing the winter storm URI problems and uh, gas showing up were passed in 2021. And we'll see if the railroad commission and the gas industry implement some of the winterization that we're, uh, they were asked to do. Okay, just uh, one last question, Sandy. What about conservation? What can consumers do to take off some of the load? Uh, consumers have been asked to take the load off by the PUC. We have been given conservation notices. Um, I, our organization and I would like to see consumers get paid for that. Big industrials get paid for that and consumers do not. They're just being asked to do it out of their own um, goodwill. And we, would, we advocated during the session and are advocating at the PUC that programs be put in place to pay consumers to turn up their um, air conditioners to a to a higher um, temperature during the day or when they're not leaving the home or put in nests or some type so, of system to so, control that. So, so let's let's all conserve. How about that? Sandy Haverlaw, thank you very much for joining thank us. You. Texas Consumer Association. Appreciate you being thank with us this morning. Charles, let's set. All right, Brad, thank you. And you know every